the president's actions and his language are in fact racist. Things like, they're good people on both sides, or send them back from where they came from. Those words gave permission to white supremacists to think that what they were doing was permissible. And I do think that the president's divisive language is indirectly tied to some of the attacks that we have seen in the last two years. That's a new ad from a group of former and current White House officials working to defeat President Trump, administration officials, I should say. Joining us now from that ad is Elizabeth Newman, former Assistant Secretary for Counterterrorism and Threat Prevention. Also, Miles Taylor, former Chief of Staff at the Department of Homeland Security, both served in the Trump administration. Elizabeth, I want to start with you because of the message from you in that commercial, which was you left the administration and you are now voting for Joe Biden largely because of your concern over the president's messaging and impact on white supremacy. Well, at the White House last night, in the final night of his convention, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who supports QAnon, which is this conspiracy theory group, which the FBI has said could inspire terrorists, domestic terrorists to violence, there she is. She was an invited guest at the Republican convention at the White House. What's the impact of that, do you think? You know, three and a half, four years ago when he was running for president, I was willing to give him uh, the benefit of the doubt that he was ignorant, that he didn't realize that his messaging was, was having this effect of rally, almost a rallying cry for these extreme views. And, and of course, in America, you can have an extreme view. The problem is that these extreme views uh, have been shown to, to cause people to act out in violence. And we have a number of examples in, in recent years where his rhetoric is tied in manifestos uh, of people that have committed attacks. I'm thinking specifically of El Paso. Um, but, but certainly uh, continuing in this behavior is irresponsible, it's reckless. If you are holding the office of the president, your first and primary duty under the Constitution is to protect us. And he is doing the exact opposite with his divisive language. Miles, uh, to an extent, you were out in front uh, on this movement that you're now trying to create with people who worked in the administration, Republicans now vocally supporting Joe Biden for president. Over the last four days at the Republican convention, the president has tried to counter some of that and I think bring Republicans back home and create fear in some ways and say this is a choice between a liberal vision and a conservative vision. To what extent do you think that's been effective over the last four days? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, John. The operative word here is fear. And the president is trying to instill fear to get people to vote for him. But I think Americans see through it. Uh, the consensus this morning, really largely among folks who watch this, is Donald Trump is trying to make the case that the only way to save America from Donald Trump is Donald Trump. It's not a very compelling argument. I go back to Elizabeth's point. The number one duty of a president is to keep Americans safe Right now, the reason Americans feel unsafe in their communities is because this is what Donald Trump's America looks like. His rhetoric jumps the tracks into violence, and that's why we're experiencing what we're experiencing. And, and I want to buttress Elizabeth's other point on domestic terrorism. I personally pushed the White House to make sure that the nation's counterterrorism strategy included a systemic and coherent vision for addressing domestic terrorism. Do you know what the, we got back in response, John? We got one or two sentences in the document, and they told us, don't worry, we'll deal, about it, deal with it later. So this is a White House that hasn't prioritized the safety of Americans, and we're seeing that play out in real time. It is a direct result of the president's leadership. And the last thing I would add is he's campaigning as a law and order president, but he is the lawlessness and disorder president. And again, that's what we're seeing play out in America's city streets. Elizabeth, you said in 2016 you voted for the president because of the issue surrounding abortion and also your faith. You are, you are very religious. I want to play some sound from Lou Holtz at this convention, a college football coach who I think appointed himself somehow an expert on Joe Biden's faith. Listen. They and other politicians are Catholic in name only and abandoned innocent lives. What do you think of someone like that at a convention in a, in a pre-prepared speech saying that someone else is a Catholic in name only? Well, I, I would caution anybody to pass judgment on another person's faith. I think that's uh, the Lord's job to know what's in a man's heart. Um, but if you are a, a, a Bible-believing, scripture-reading 
Christian, um, uh, Jesus tells us very clearly to judge uh, one another by the fruits that we see, not necessarily the words that we speak. And I think the fruits that we see in Joe Biden's life are fruits that are more consistent with what scripture calls for in terms of uh, caring for the least of these, in terms of loving one another, even turning the other cheek. And I see the exact opposite in President Trump. So the man lacks uh, complete character. Uh, and and there, any number of other uh, uh, people have talked about uh, the challenges of his character, and I, and I won't spend time on that. But, but the point here is that if you're, if you're assessing the fruit, uh, I, I think Joe Biden has a lot more fruit and evidence of, of godliness in his life than, than President Trump does. Miles, 10 seconds or less. You've planned out, I think, the next two months meticulously. What's the next step for your organization? Look, Elizabeth and I are going to be working together to do two big things, repair the GOP and repair the United States. And you're going to hear an announcement from us sometime after Labor Day about the people who are linking arms with us in this mission. It will be more folks from the Trump administration. It will be more luminaries from the GOP. And we're going to lay out an agenda to bring the party back and repair the damage that Donald Trump has done over the last four years as president. Miles Taylor, Elizabeth Newman, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Appreciate your time. Thank you.